Hello students and welcome to today's daily quiz presented to you by Baidu's exam prep IES. So let us start with our first question. Which of the statements are true regarding the Rail Kaushal Vikas Yojana? It provides vocational training to the unemployed spouses and children of the railway employees. It does not include the provision of providing employment to the candidates. So we have taken this question because Recently, the Indian Railways, it has said that it imparts training to more than 15,000 candidates under the Rail Kaushal Vikas Yojana. So, this Yojana, it is a skill development program for all the youth all across the country. It is not limited to any particular section. Where the Railways, it imparts technical training in various trades in order to enhance their employability, that is, someone can employ them in their firm and their entrepreneurship, that is, they can start their own businesses. Now, this scheme, it started in 2021 in the month of September on a pan-India basis and up until now, 23,181 enrolled candidates have been there out of which 15,665 they have completed their training entirely. However, there is no provision of providing employment under the scheme. So over here, this is a wrong statement because youth all across the country from any strata, they can come and join this particular yojana. This, however, is correct because, yes, there is no provision of providing employment to these candidates. So, the correct answer here is B. Now, the next question. Which of the following article regarding special provisions to states are correctly matched? 371B, Arunachal Pradesh. 371C, Manipur. 371F, Sikkim. And 371H, Goa. We have taken this question. Because recently, the Mizoram Assembly, it has adopted a resolution that has opposed the Uniform Civil Code that has been enshrined under Article 44 in the Indian Constitution. So, this is a directive principle of state policy under the Indian Constitution that aims to develop a uniform civil code for the entire country. Now, the Assembly of Mizoram, they have said that even though Mizoram it has a special provision within the constitution under the article 371G in order to protect its social or religious practices, customary laws and procedures. They still think that UCC according to them is not healthy for India as a whole. Now what does article 371G do? It states that no act of the Indian parliament in respect of religious or social practices of the Mizos Meso customary law and procedure, administration of civil and criminal justice involving decisions according to Meso customary law, ownership and transfer of land shall apply to Mizoram unless the state legislature by a resolution decides it. Now, these types of special provisions, they have not been just given to Mizoram for the protection of the Mesos, but also to various parts of the country for different purposes. For example, Article 371 talks about development and special provisions for Vidarbha and Marathwara region of Maharashtra and Saurashtra and Kutch region of Gujarat. 371A is providing special provisions to Nagaland, B is for Assam, C for Manipur, D and E for Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, F is for Sikkim, G as we saw here is for Mizoram. H is for Arunachal Pradesh, I for Goa and J, the latest one is for parts of Karnataka. So over here, which one of these are correctly matched? This is not correct because 371B, it is for Assam. This is correct, yes, C is for Manipur, F is for Sikkim. However, H, it is not for Goa, it is for Arunachal Pradesh. For Goa, we have 371 I. So, out of these, the correct answer here is B. Now, the next question. Which of the following agencies released the report? Global sea level rise and implications. So, we have these four agencies. World Bank, World Economic Forum, World Meteorological Organization and Greenpeace. So, over here in this article, you can clearly see that WMO, 
that is World Meteorological Organization has released this report titled Global Sea Level Rise and Implications and this report raises a lot of warnings for Asia because India, China, Bangladesh and Netherlands they face the highest threat of sea level rise globally according to this report. Now this rise in global sea level, it will not just bring about environmental challenges but it will also cause major economic, social and humanitarian challenges for our entire community. So over here, what is the correct answer? It is C. World Meteorological Organization has released this report. Now the fourth question, which of the following statements are true regarding geo heritage sites they are declared by the archaeological survey of india the parliament has passed the law geo heritage sites and geo relics preservation and maintenance act to protect such sites now recently the union government especially the ministry of mines it has brought a new legislation that is geo heritage sites and geo relics preservation and maintenance bill 2022 right now it is under the consideration of the parliament now this bill it aims to provide for the preservation protection and maintenance of the geo heritage and the geo relic sites which are of national importance now the draft bill it is defining clearly both the geo heritage sites as well as geo relic sites and it is giving a power to the geological survey of india to declare any such site as a geo relic or geo heritage site after which the maintenance and protection of that particular site will be the responsibility of either gsi or the state government or both of them in tandem with each other now these sites they are not a new thing since the year 2016 the geological survey of india has had the power to declare any site as a geo heritage or geo relic site this bill is just to formalize the entire process so over here this is a wrong statement they are declared by gsi that is geological survey of india this is also wrong because the bill it hasn't been passed it hasn't become an act yet so the correct answer over here is D. Now we come to a PYQ. From the decline of Guptas until the rise of Harshavardhana in the early 7th century, which of the following kingdoms were holding power in northern India? We have the Guptas of Magadh, the Paramars of Malwa, Pushyabhutis of Thanesar, Mokharis of Kannauj, Yadavs of Devgiri and Maitrakas of Vallabhi. Now, after the Gupta Empire, it declined. The later Gupta, which were successors of the main Gupta clan, they succeeded as rulers of Magadh area during the early 7th century. So, this is a correct statement. Now, the Parmar dynasty, it was not present during the early 7th century. In fact, it did rule the western and central parts of India, including Malwa, but it was between 9th to 14th centuries and not 7th century. So this is a wrong statement. The Pushyabhutis, they did rule the area in and around Thanesar in this time period. So this is correct. The Mokhari dynasty, it ruled over parts of UP where Kannauj belongs and Magadh until around 606 AD. After this time, what happened? The later Guptas, they annexed their territory. So this is correct because they were there during the early 7th century. The Yadavs, however, they did not rule in this time. They ruled in the 12th century till 14th century in the western parts of India. So this is incorrect. And finally, about the Maitrakas, they ruled the western and northern parts of current day Gujarat that includes the territory of Vallabhi during the late 5th century up until late 8th century AD. So this is correct. So what is our correct answer over here? It is 1, 3, 4 and 6 that is option B. Now we come to the fact of the day. It is about nano urea liquid. Now Dr. Mansukh Mandavia who is the Union Minister of Chemicals and Fertilizers, he has inaugurated IFCO Nano Urea Liquid Plant 
both at Aonla and Fulpur in Uttar Pradesh. Now recently, there was a launch of the first nano urea plant somewhere in India. Can you in the comments tell us the name of that particular place? So what exactly is nano urea? Now urea you know it is a fertilizer which provides the plants with nitrogen which is an essential element that is required by the plants for their growth. Now nano urea is a nanotechnology product which was developed at IFCO's Nano Biotechnology Research Center. Now why is it called nano? Because compared to conventional urea, it has a particle size of 20 to 50 nanometer. So it comes under the purview of nanotechnology. The difference between normal urea and nano urea is that while urea it is applied to the soil and then absorbed by the plant through its roots. Nano urea is sprayed because it is a liquid. It is sprayed on the plants and it enters the plant through the stomata of the leaves. Now there are multiple benefits of nano urea over simple urea. Major one is with regards to soil pollution. When we use urea in the soil, only 35% of the urea, it gets used by the crops and the unused is left in the soil. It gets leached in the soil and it contaminates the groundwater. Otherwise, through the agricultural runoff, it can contaminate the water bodies like ponds, like lakes and it can also lead to eutrophication. Apart from that, the production process of nano urea is much energy efficient compared to that of normal urea. Also, the nutrient use efficiency is 80% higher in case of nano urea. Various field studies, they have also shown that nano urea compared to the normal urea, it enhances the crop productivity up to 8%, which is very beneficial for the farmers. And because of all these reasons, nano urea liquid, it has been termed as a revolutionary product in terms of agricultural technology. And the country wants more and more farmers to adopt nano urea instead of the normal urea. So with that, we come to an end to the daily quiz. I hope you were able to understand all the concepts dealt with over here. So thank you very much and have a very good day.